Hi all. Hope you have joined into our webinar session. And here we are. So here we are going to discuss a bit about the practical DevOps and continuous delivery. So myself, Binu, I'm the technical manager of Bridge Global here. We are actually concentrating on web development, the IT software solutions, as well as Windows web application, mobile application, everything. So recently we were into this practical DevOps and continuous delivery uh, with uh, one of our big assignments and we started uh, gaining some good momentum with this particular uh, frame, DevOps framework as well as the, the advantages of continuous delivery. So that's why we wanted to share this uh, good experience, knowledge with uh, the software community also. So thanks for coming in and hearing our experience here. And uh, let me introduce my fellow presenters here, Anuraj, who is the DevOps engineer for one of the big assignments which I just spoke about. And he is uh, the DevOps uh, specialist of, for this particular project, and he will explain you more about like how we actually benefited from the DevOps practices and uh, how it closely worked along with the Agile methodology. And then we have Saji Xavier, who is uh, actually a specialist on uh, software automation process for the last 10 plus years and uh, he has a lot of experience in this uh, uh, DevOps technology along with the QA process which we will let you know like how important is the QA in the in this DevOps process so because uh, it's it comes from the start of this DLC to to the sign of process so that's why we took QA also into this particular topic and then like uh, uh, about this particular webinar, if you throughout the process, if you have any queries or questions, uh, feel free to uh, type in your questions in our chat window, which in the toolbar, which you can see in the top left corner of our screen. Please make use of it so that we will answer it uh, during the timeline. And uh, if if there is any questions which is unanswered due to any time constraints, we will get back to you with the details via email. So. I hand over to my fellow presenter Anuraj to start with the presentation regarding the DevOps and uh, Anuraj, it's all yours. Hi all, uh, good morning and good evening to all those who are in Indians. So let me share my screen. Uh, so before I start, uh, thank, thank you so much Binu, so you, you gave me a wonderful introduction. Yeah, practical DevOps and continuous delivery. So this is the topic that we are going to discuss uh, in the next one hour. <clears throat> and our agenda will be like, uh, we'll be uh, going through the DevOps story and uh, we'll be talking about the agile DevOps with traditional approaches, uh, what's continuous testing, continuous integration, continuous delivery, uh, what are all the tools and techniques that can be used for the successful implementation of DevOps and uh, finally, the role transitions on demand. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, nowadays uh, we hear a lot about DevOps, right? So I would say it's one of the most misinterpreted business keyword that's in internet. Do you guys agree with that? The job portals are getting filled with uh, job titles like DevOps engineers, DevOps architects, DevOps managers. So people started talking more about automation so many of them have, have started even providing trainings and certifications for DevOps. So uh, I'm not sure if uh, those guys even know what DevOps exactly is, so sorry, but uh, still I wonder. So um, many people started thinking, should I learn DevOps? So what should I do now? Do I need to start thinking about DevOps? So what exactly DevOps is about? <clears throat> so uh, I hope you have heard of the story uh, of a few blind men and elephant. So they were actually asked to determine what it looked like by touching different parts of an elephant. So the man who touched the leg said, it's a pillar. And the one who touched the tail said, no, it's a rope. Uh, like that each of them had uh, different interpretations of their own for an elephant. So when coming into DevOps, some says it, it's just a job title. And for some, it's all about automation. For a few else, it's uh, the collaboration between the development and operations team. And uh, for some others, it means faster and smaller releases. So where then, 
what really means DevOps? Is it just tools? No, it's not just tools. It's not just culture. It's not just devs and ops. It's, it's not just a job title. It's, it's not just these things. So time for a story. So I'll tell you a small story. So it, it's, it's actually a small love story of uh, a husband and wife whose name is Dev and Ops. Okay. So uh, Dev and Ops are happily married couple. So <clears throat> they venture into a small catering business. So uh, Dev agrees being the cook since he was innovative in turning dishes and Ops agrees that she will take care of delivery, customer and operations part of the catering services. So at the start, uh, their customer base was small. So uh, they made some success, but slowly the customer base started increasing. So to catch up to the market and on-time delivery, Dev introduced some changes in the kitchen arrangements where he could save time keeping stuff in one place, uh, buying modern gadgets, etc. So uh, since Ops delivers to customers, she had to know the menu cooked so that uh, she packed and uh, took care of that delivery part. So uh, she introduced a board to visualize what is cooked, going to who, and feedback for that day. So uh, things started to improve, but uh, both observed that uh, whenever they introduced new dish directly to all their large customers, there was a huge rejection rate. So it was pretty high. So they decided that they would try new dish to only select a few customers, get their feedback, and then roll out to the rest. So after implementing the feedback. So uh, this way, there were a lot of more uh, acceptance and uh, reduced operational cost. So and last uh, but not the least, sometimes during large orders, Ops would uh, help Dev in cooking and uh, Dev would help Ops in delivering, which helped them to keep up to the market uh, on time and ahead of others. So after all, the secret behind every successful marriage is would be sharing, right? So if any husbands are here listening to me, um, they can relate to it uh, pretty well. And of course, you, you might be sharing their day-to-day -day jobs like washing the clothes, cook something for dinner, bathing your kids, etc. like I do, uh, so that our wives are happy and at the end we have a happy family. So uh, what it means to the IT world. So Dev and Ops development team and operations teams are not different silos. So they have to uh, work each other, share their responsibilities each other, uh, they should work together for the success uh, and the happiness of the entire project and for the entire team. So, uh, so it, it, it's all about a combination of process, people and tools. It's not just any of these single things. It's a combination of process, it's a combination of people and it's a combination of uh, so-called tools as well. <clears throat> so, uh, according to the DevOps culture, so you might have seen this uh, logo of DevOps. Uh, whenever you go and search DevOps in Google, you will be uh, the first picture you'll be seeing will be this, right? So uh, according to the DevOps culture, a single group of engineers, uh, engineers means uh, it can be developers, system admins, QA guys, uh, etc. They're now turned into DevOps engineers actually. So they have end-to-end -end responsibility of the application right from gathering the requirement to development, to testing, to infrastructure deployment, to application deployment, and finally, uh, monitoring and gathering the feedback from the end users, then again implementing the changes, and the process goes on, right? So this is another engine cycle, and, and the logo of DevOps makes a perfect sense to me. Uh, so just look at the diagram. What would have been a better symbol than infinity to symbolize DevOps, right? So, so it, it's, it's all about uh, DevOps can create an infinite loop of releases and feedback for all your code and deployment targets. So let's uh, look a bit of history of DevOps, where it comes from. So actually, Patrick DeVoice and Andrew Schaffer presented a paper in Agile conference in Canada in the year 2008. So they were talking about the applicability of Agile principles in infrastructure. Following them, John Alspo and Paul Hammond gave the seminal 10 deploys per day. 10 deploys per day. At those times, it was like, wow, 10 deploys per day? 
Even, even now in many of the organizations, it's not happening. I'm, I'm pretty sure about that. So uh, they were talking about the Dev and Ops Corporation, the Development and the Operations Team Corporation at Flickr during the Velocity Conference, which happened in 2009. So finally, the first guy, Patrick Dubois, which I was mentioning about, uh, he, he got inspired by the above idea, and he created the first DevOps day in Gent, uh, in Belgium in 2009, and that's how the term DevOps was coined. So why DevOps? So, so we all know yesterday's practices may not meet today's demand, right? So according to the uh, RightScale's 2016 State of the Cloud Survey, more than 80% of enterprise companies and 70% of the small businesses are in the process of adopting DevOps practices. So companies are investing in DevOps more heavily uh, than ever before. Uh, and as Puppet's uh, 2016 uh, State of DevOps report, Puppet is a tool, I hope you all know about that, uh, State of DevOps report, it demonstrates that uh, the investment is actually getting paid off. So they're getting benefited from this. So high-performing IT organizations practicing, practicing DevOps have uh, 2,555 times faster lead times. So, I hope you know about lead times, right? The lead time means uh, it's, it's the time taken to go from a single idea to a working software in production. So the lead time has become faster to 2,555 times. It's a fact and uh, three times lower change failure rates, 24 times faster mean time to recovery. So things are getting faster, things are getting better than ever before, things are becoming cheaper, and finally everyone is becoming happier. It all ends up in the customer satisfaction, the thing which we are all working forward, right? Yes, so it, it's all about end-to-end -end responsibility, sharing your responsibilities each other, so I have, uh, in most of the companies, there they practice like uh, there will be siloed QA teams and the dev teams and uh, even if the dev teams are now a part of QA team, uh, in many companies, even if they follow Agile or DevOps, still they are in siloed team. So uh, that, that will not work. The major concept of DevOps is all about better collaboration, better communication. Communication is a vital part and sharing your responsibilities. So testers will be simply sitting and telling like, yeah, just give me the build, then only I can start my work. So will it work in DevOps? No. So it, it's like sharing your responsibilities with everyone. You have to start from the initial stage itself. Because you're also traveling in the same boat, and if something very bad happens, everyone will be in pain. So the responsibility is for the whole team, not for the particular department or particular development. It's not about individuals, it's, it's all about teamwork, right? So uh, we have learned what DevOps is, uh, and uh, of course, as I said uh, at first, uh, there are a common myths about DevOps as well, so we have to know what DevOps is not. Of. So I have heard uh, DevOps is 100% end-to-end automation. Do you think 100% automation is practical? I don't think so. Uh, even I, I was uh, I was a QA lead uh, for over more than many of the projects, and I, I have handled the QA uh, for many projects. And uh, from my experience, I don't think 100% automation is possible. So it's not about 100% end-to-end automation. Then someone says, like, DevOps is all about tools. Bring, bring in some tools, bring in Jenkins, bring in Sona Cubes, bring in Puppet, Chef, blah, blah, blah. Then you are done with DevOps. Is it so? No. It's not about just bringing in some tools. And for some, it, it, they say it's like, uh, DevOps involves only development and operations. Come on. Development and operations. So uh, to relate with, I had a friend uh, who was a QA, and a few years back uh, we were having some sort of discussion, and he was telling me like, "Hey man, have you heard about a new, new uh, methodology? It's, it's coming up. It's emerging, DevOps." And I was like, "Oh yeah, yeah, I have heard about it." And he was saying like, "Hey man, believe it or not, we guys are going into way. Our jobs are going to be vanished." We have no role in these DevOps. 
Only the developers and operations team are working together. Only the business analyst, operations team, and developers will be having uh, tasks or jobs to do. QA is not a part because QA will be done by everyone. So QA is not at all a mandatory thing. And I was just, what? Do you guys think so? Hmm? It's it's uh, it's not about losing the QA job or it's it's not like that. The the, the fact is. The role of QA is becoming more challenging. So your, your, challenge, your job challenge is getting increased. So that's, that will in turn will, uh, will be a good sign for the entire project. So it's not like you're losing your job. You're getting more challenged. You have to overcome those challenges. You have to perform more. You have to uh, learn more languages. You, you may have to learn more tools. So your job is getting challenged. It, not, it doesn't mean like uh, you have nothing to do. The fact is that the QA guys are one of the core people who could contribute to the DevOps community. Because it, it's all about continuous testing, continuous integration, automated test. So these, these are to be done by them. And for some, there is only one way to do DevOps. No, not at all. Some do DevOps in one way and some do DevOps in their own ways. So there are different methods of doing DevOps. And DevOps is about reducing the staff by half, not at all, as I mentioned earlier. It's, it's not like that, come on. And DevOps work only well with startups. No, it works well with any companies. So we'll be discussing that later. And finally, what if I told you DevOps and Agile are not the same thing? So well, many people um, misinterpret uh, like both are same or both are exactly the same ideology. Uh, so I hope uh, many of the guys who are listening to me right now will not be having such a uh, confusion, but still, let me clear that. So it, it's, Agile is all about uh, starting the development and ending the development. And DevOps is an extension to Agile. So it will be also having the release and the production support, the operations task also. So uh, DevOps is actually an extension to the Agile methodology. Okay, so how to optimize quality for DevOps? So as I said earlier, get testers involved early. So many companies testers were siloed teams, independent teams. So make sure that your QA guys are right there in your project, right from the starting of the planning meetings. Because there should be someone who is really concerned about the quality. So embed testers within the product or scrum teams. Make sure they have a seat at the table in planning discussions. And uh, they can contribute more at the initial stage itself. I'm sure about that. And embrace frequent, if not continuous, testing. So as Agile promotes frequent code mergers and builds and deployments, so we have to employ a process that allows the most vital testing to be identified and executed efficiently. And we have to decrease the time from design to test. So mostly uh, with two to three Agile sprints, we do not have weeks or even days to define the uh, test cases that we will be writing. So many of them will be writing test cases manually, or many of them will be writing it directly as test automation scripts. So we have to identify and we have to choose the right way. So continuous testing is becoming uh, more vital uh, nowadays. And uh, I think uh, Saji will be uh, explaining you more in detail about continuous testing and continuous integration. So uh, I would like to hand over the mic to Saji, my colleague. So thank you all. Thanks a lot, Anuraj. Uh, uh, by the meantime, my fellow attendees, if you have any questions so far in DevOps uh, stream, please feel free to post the questions in our chat group so that uh, we will look into and answer it on the go. Thank you. Saji, all yours. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Anuraj. Uh, thank you, Vino. I am Saji Saver. I am continuing with uh, continuous testing. Why continuous testing is so important in DevOps? Continuous testing is the process of automatically and continually checking the changes in code. Whether this is a functional regression suite that runs with the checking of early build, a smoke test suite, at the beginning of every day or a performance test that check SLAs every 
minute, hour, day, or week on specified user paths. The concept is more than automation. It represents consistent, continuous validation that keeps the DevOps machine moving forward. In this webinar, uh, you will learn how continuous testing will help you. It's control the side effects. It's avoid software defect snowballs to set uh, a fast result in short time and release in hours, not months. And the points uh, we can collaborate it in proactively fix, find and fix defects early in the process, increase team productivity with better tools and processes, identify and act on essential build and test information, deliver a much better user experience for web and mobile apps. It works best with the web and mobile apps. And in continuous testing, the key elements are, these seven key elements are in continuous testing with the data, service virtualization, environments, analytics, automation, management, and defects. These seven categories merge into four, the four main categories. The first is risk assessment, policy analysis, requirement traceability, advanced analysis. In this group, the analytics part, the risk assessment covers risk mitigation task, technical depth, quality assessment, and test coverage optimization to ensure the build is ready to progress toward the SDLC cycle. In policy analysis, in policy analysis, ensure all processes align with the organization's evolving business and complaints demands. Primary objectives including identify trends associated with injunction of dangerous patterns within the code, augmenting defect prevention practices for high risk areas, isolating risk in targeted areas. And in traceability, and we have a traceability of requirements. We have a large set of traceability. We can ensure true requirements are met and rework is not required. An object assessment to identify which requirements are at risk, working as expected or require further validation. And in management, and in management section, advanced analysis that key is working, that key element is working on that area using different environments that using automation in areas such as static code analysis, change impact analysis, and scope assessment prioritization to prevent defects in the first place and accomplishing more within each iteration. Continuous testing is broken up into at least four environments, development environment, continuous integration environment, QA, pre-production, and performance testing environment and the staging environment. Additional host live monitoring further enable end-to-end -end continuous testing. Our, our quality excellence and assurance business unit helped a leading Nordic banking and insurance career identify defects 200 percentage faster in its claim center by establishing the culture of failing fast through a continuous testing model and powered by an intelligent regression model. Through intelligent regression, updated application code was implemented by the automated test in a few minutes post deployment compared with days in the past. The next is continuous integration. A cornerstone of DevOps is continuous integration, the short CI. It's a technique designed and named by Grady Boo that continually merges source code updates from all developers on a team into a shared mainline. This continual merging 
prevents a developer's local copy of a software project from drifting, drifting too far afield as new code is added by others, avoiding catastrophic merge conflicts. In practice, CA involves a centralized server that continually pulls in all new source code chains as developers commit them and build the software build the software application from scratch notifying the team of any failures in the processes if a failure is seen the development team is expected to refocus and fix the build before making any additional code changes while this may seem disruptive in practice it focuses the development team on a singular stability metric a working automated build of the software. DevOps takes the principle of agile and expands their scope, recognizing that ensuring high quality development requires continual engagement and feedback from a variety of technical experts, including QA and operation specialists. For example, continuous integration offers a real-time window into the actual state of the software system and associated quality measurements, allowing immediate and constant engagement of all team members, including operations and QA. Throughout the project lifecycle, CA, CA is a form of extreme transparency that makes sure that all projects stakeholders can monitor, engage, and positively contribute to the evolving software project without disrupting the team with constant status meetings or refocus, refocusing the efforts. The next is DevOps and continuous delivery. Successfully implementing DevOps in the organizations put, puts you one step closer to continuous delivery. Continuous delivery is the notion that as soon as a feature or feature set has been completed, it can be automatically rolled into production. According to a, an Amazon presentation from the Velocity Conference in 2011, Amazon rolled a new feature out to production every 11 seconds in May of that year. Not every 11 days, not every 11 hours, every 11 seconds that is continuous delivery at its finest. In continuous delivery, implementing continuous delivery means making sure your software is always production ready and hang out its entire life cycle that any build could potentially be released to users at the touch of a button using a fully automated process in a matter of seconds or minutes. Continuous deployment. In continuous uh, deployment is the next step of continuous delivery. Every changes that passes the automated test is deployed to production automatically. In this slide, in continuous integration is uh, if the uh, yeah if the build is ready, then automated unit test scripts are in place and it passes it deployed to the staging server and our functional, that is our functional test cases like uh, verification, that positive test cases and uh, negative test cases like uh, exploratory test cases, these both test cases are passed, then it's reflected or it's merged to the acceptance criteria or into production. In continuous delivery, there is a difference that in acceptance test after the acceptance test is manually deployed into production. But in continuous deployment, the domain difference is in continuous deployment, build, unit test, deployment to staging, acceptance test, and it's automatically deployed into production. It's automatically happened because various tools, we have a set of various tools, a rich set of tools we are using for this process, continuous integration, continuous delivery, and continuous deployment. And the next, we have a uh, look on what are the tools using in DevOps. Automation is undergoing even more dramatic changes than manual testing. 
with a new breed of tools. We have a set of open source tools in open source to provide lower cost and allow more members to contribute automation. We have cross platform like web, mobile and desktop and DevOps capable tools that is reliable with the ability to be run quickly and in parallel to allow or fast frequent tools. Yeah, we have uh, divided the tools using it, you, you, uh, using for unit testing, UI, that's UI testing, and a load performance testing. And we have the first set is open source, and then the continuous integration tools like Jenkins, Hudson, TeamCity, and we have Travers, and in orchestration, that's Puppet, Chef, and in configuration management, that is CM, we have Docker, Selenium Grid, and more tools are available in. The secret of DevOps success is automated way. It's fully automated way. When software organizations strive to deliver good quality software to their customers based on the need and market requirements. However, the business needs are not static and they change continuously based on the changing market requirements. Organizations also know that software is difficult to ship and all the development activities can be completed for the software. That is a requirement, design code, build and test. But when it comes to deployment, there are frequent issues and consequently organizations take time to deploy the software in the production environment. The continuous delivery tools adopted by the industry across the different categories are numerous and vary widely. Some of uh, these are the tools we already discussed about. The, uh, some of the tools, these tools are used for uh, make our production activities and our integration and our continuous processing make very easy. And an early automation approach involves the automation team in the early phase of the testing lifecycle to support agile or iterative pro projects. Automation scripting can commence in parallel to system development and the test automation. In a world of nightly or weekend regression runs, the volume of testing has increased substantially. And with this increased volume of testing comes the need for test automation. DevOps can simply not succeed if it still requires a large number of test cases to be run manually with DevOps. Quality becomes everybody's concern. In theory, that's great news. However, there is a great Chinese proverb which translates to the shared courtyard never gets swept. If something is everybody's problem, then it's really no one's problem. In true DevOps style, development and test automation engineers need to work together to help the automation tester to develop the script and maximize the test coverage. And we have a set of case studies. My colleague Anuraj will give you a description or a great description about some of the case studies. Thank you all. Uh, so, hi, Sidi. Thanks a lot. And, um, yeah. So, uh, now that uh, you have heard about the significance of DevOps and uh, learned about its different stages along with the develop DevOps tools involved, uh, so uh, let us now look at Facebook case study and understand why they moved from Agile to DevOps. So, actually, why they extended from Agile to DevOps. So, we will be uh, we will do this by uh, taking up the use case of Facebook's 2011 uh, rollout of new feature that resulted in them uh, reassessing their product delivery and taking on the DevOps approaches. So, uh, in 2011, Facebook rolled out a slew of new features like uh, timeline, ticker, and music functionalities to its 500 million users spread across the globe. So the huge traffic, you, you can imagine what's the traffic of Facebook, right? So the huge traffic that was generated on Facebook following the release led to a server meltdown 
you can imagine uh, what will happen if all these guys are trying to use this uh, new functionality all over the clock. So it's like the meltdown of the server, right? So the features that were rolled out garnered mixed responses from users, uh, which led to inconclusive results of the effectiveness of new features, leaving them with uh, no actionable insights. So they, even their credibility was being questioned. So this led to an evaluation and reassessment of strategies resulting in Facebook. So they come up with a a method, they come up with an approach called dark launching technique. So using the DevOps principles, Facebook created the following methodology for the launch of its new release. So the new features are first deployed on a smaller and specific user base. So it, it's a process of uh, uh, gradually rolling out production ready features to a selected set of users before a full release. So then they are continuously monitored and the feedback is continuously uh, developed and tested. And once the features are stable, they are deployed on other user bases in multiple releases. So uh, this allows development team to get user feedback early on test bugs and also uh, stress test infrastructure performance. So a direct result of continuous delivery. This method of release helps in faster and more iterative releases that ensure that the application performance does not get affected and that the release is well received by the customers. So actually in the dark launch technique, features are released to a small user base through a dedicated deployment pipeline. So in the diagram which we are seeing right now, uh, this is the conceptual diagram of the Facebook's dark launch. Theory. So you can see that uh, only one deployment pipeline is turned on to deploy the new features to a select set of users. So the remaining hundred of pipelines are all turned off at this point. So the specific user base on which the features have been deployed are continuously monitored to collect feedback and identify the bugs. So these bugs and feedback will be incorporated in development, tested and deployed on the same user base until the feature becomes stable. So once stability is achieved, the features will be gradually deployed on other user bases by turning on other deployment pipelines as well. So uh, Facebook do this by wrapping code in a feature flag or feature toggle, uh, which is used to control who gets to see the new feature and when. So this exposes pain points and areas of the application's infrastructure that needs attention prior to the full-fledged launch while still simulating the full effect of launching the code to users. So once the, feet, once the features are stable, they are deployed to the rest of the users of multiple releases. So this way Facebook has controlled a stable mechanism for developing new functionalities to its massive user base. You can imagine what's the user base of Facebook, right? So on the contrary, if the feature does not get a good response, they have an option to roll back on their deployment altogether. So this also helps them to prepare their servers for deployment as they can predict the user activity on their website and they can scale up their servers accordingly. So uh, I hope the diagram has given you the topics about how the dark cloud takes place at Facebook. So not only Facebook, uh, Amazon, uh, Netflix and Google along with many leading tech giants uses dark launches to gradually release and test new features to a small set of their users before releasing to everyone. So the intention of DevOps is to create better quality software more quickly and with more reliability while inviting greater communication and collaboration between the teams. So it's also an automation process that allows good, safe and high quality software development and releases while keeping all the stakeholders in the loop. So this is a real reason why DevOps is seeing an all-time high adoption leading to increasing career opportunities as well. So we were discussing about the tools, we were discussing about the culture. Now, now, what about the people who are into the DevOps? What about the people who are working with DevOps? So earlier, as I discussed, they were, they were all the siloed teams, right? So uh, uh, we, have, we already have mentioned about the uh, siloed team activities which is happening. So developer writes uh, the code uh, and uh, testers will be waiting uh, for the fuel, uh, even the many of the developers doesn't like the testers at all, right? And uh, even in 
it's the same. It, it, it's reverse as well. The testers were also uh, a nightmare for the developers. So uh, these testers need to be embedded within the team, within the tab team. And agile implies uh, test often and as soon as possible. And DevOps recommends the continuous testing, which we have discussed. So testing is a continuous process, and every member should contribute to it. Everyone's responsibility should be shared. Everyone should do everything. That's the the people's mindset should be changed. There should not be a mindset like I will only. Uh, code in with this language or I will only um, test, I will only develop. So that is a gone guys, please, please grow up, that is a gone. Things are getting more challenging and you have to get adopted to it, that's the only way. Okay, so uh, a new breed of team is being developed. So while coming into testers, um, as I all, already discussed, they were independently working uh, for reporting the bugs and also uh, they, they need to be more adaptable, they need to be well versed as they may be reassigned to many different projects maybe, not only a single project. So they need to uh, know what's happening and they, they need to be updated always. Uh, the team should focus on learning a broader set of skills rather than going deep in one specific area. For example, uh, the testers staying with manual testing is not going to be fun. You are getting challenged. You need to start thinking about automation. You need to start thinking about different automation tools like that. So the team skills should be improved. The technology skills should be improved. And your managerial skills even because in DevOps, you are your manager. You should manage yourself. So that also needs to be improved. So. Uh, Actually, DevOps is not just this, it's much more, but uh, within the time limitation, we can only discuss these, these uh, bit of things, but uh, I hope uh, we can have further webinar sessions so that we'll discuss things in detail. So, yeah, that's all from us. Any questions so far? Yes, Anuraj uh, uh, and Sajji, we have a couple of uh, interesting questions coming in, like uh, one of his like, one of our attendees, Lekha, asked us, like, if DevOps is about tools, uh, do we have open source tools or will this cost startup companies a lot to get DevOps started? What, do you, what is your take on that? Yeah, we have a, a rich set of open source uh, tools that we already discussed in, in our slides. Like we mm -hmm. have Jenkins, uh, that continuous integration tools, and we have Puppet. And yeah, we have a rich set of uh, open source tools for uh, continuous integration, continuous delivery, and continuous uh, deployment we have. OK, OK. We can, we can share the related uh, links uh, with this attendee pretty soon, right? Yes, uh, Saji has already discussed about so 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 called tools and all. Uh, uh, for continuous testing, we can use Selenium. We can use Protractor if the, if they are Angular based. So these are all um, uh, open source tools which can be used for automation purposes, end to end testing purposes, and uh, for continuous integration, we can use Jenkins and uh, Travis, uh, even the GitLab CI. Team City, but Team City is a paid one. Uh, but still, they have open source version as well. And uh, we we have tools like Puppet Chef. Uh, so there are a, there are a lot of open source tools available in market right now. So starting with DevOps is not a costly process. It, it's all about uh, changing your mindset and going towards that uh, that particular uh, idea of adapting to the new DevOps. So. Uh, it, it, it's not so costly, so uh, maybe we can send out uh, a white paper or something uh, listing out all these open source tools and also that you can get benefited from that. Perfect, yeah. And uh, other one is uh, from Justin, he's from New Jersey, I believe. And he has an interesting question, like if we don't have an in-house DevOps team, like uh, can, it, can this entire DevOps can be outsourced? Like how how much feasibility is the same process being outsourced? Uh, yes, uh, that's that's an interesting question actually. Uh, well, DevOps can be outsourced because uh, in our company itself we are doing it in that way. Uh, 
some of the big companies have outsourced their DevOps, some of their DevOps activities to us. It's, it's all about uh, increasing the collaboration and communication. And if you think you are well enough fit with all these collaboration and communication, you can go for outsourcing without any doubt. Because there are a lot of lot of tools available in the market uh, for all these activities. For, uh, for better communication, we can use Slack, Skype, um, Mattermost, the recent one from the GitLab. So with the help of all these things, it, it's not a big question if, whether it should be outsourced or not. We can do it. And we have done it. That's it. Yeah, thank you. And one another attendee, uh, one Ms. Rin Nandini, she's asking like, can performance testing and security testing can be included in DevOps? Of course, the security, uh, while coming to security, it, security is not at all about the application security. It's, it's about the uh, server security as well. So uh, since operation team is also brought into the picture in DevOps, so these are the guys, the operation teams are the guys who are more concerned with the network related things and network related security stuffs and all. So with all these people working together, the question of security is well explained, I guess. Because the, 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 the product which is being developed in DevOps will have less uh, chance of being hacked or something. Because uh, all levels of security stuffs are being covered. So because uh, there is a collaboration of all activities which is happening. So we'll be performing the performance. We, we have set up tools for performance testing of the applications. Uh, we can do that. And uh, after that, uh, these operation, guy, operation team guys will be having a uh, set of tools for performing the uh, network security and all. And uh, while Saji explained about continuous integration, uh, we can set a pipeline or we can set a rule in the continuous integration server itself. Like we already have certain pipelines like uh, uh, we will check if the unit testing is passed, all the unit testing is getting passed, and we will check uh, the code quality using uh, tools like SonarCube and all. Uh, so it, it will analyze the code and it will, it will also uh, check for the code quality and the security level uh, of each, each line of code. And uh, we can use tools like this to create pipelines and uh, we can ensure that once these pipelines are only completed and finished, or uh, they are success, then only it will be going for the deployment. So it, it, it can happen. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Anuraj. And uh, we have one another query from Sulap Tyagi, and what he's asking is what challenges usually Agile team face while practicing continuous integration and deployment, and how to overcome those? Like, what exactly are the challenges, and how can we overcome those? Any ideas? Uh, one of the most discussed challenges so far is uh, improving the collaboration. Uh, so, uh, as I said earlier, uh, both were like it's not my job, it's not my job, it's your job. So it, that thing should change. So our mindset mindset should be changed. So that's one of the key uh, challenge which we are going to face. Uh, so we have to increase our communication and collaboration. Communication is a major challenge actually. So a lot of challenges that we see when people are trying to lead change in an organization is around communication, right? So we need to improve the communication. Uh, we need to share our work with the team. We need to discuss more with the team. Okay, and, and uh, pipelines uh, within the continuous integration server as well, so that uh, we can uh, filter the application. Uh, yeah, the point and we have one another query from one Mr. Eshwant, and he asked like, what is the difference between continuous delivery and continuous deployment? Yeah, now Sajid will explain that. The, the key difference between uh, these is the scope of automation is applied in continuous deployment. Yeah, as we discussed earlier, in continuous delivery, we have, uh, you, uh, we have the code ready for testing, and it's, and it's uh, in uh, to unit test, and it's uh, unit test passed, and it's go to the integration, and then to accept and testing. And in uh, continuous delivery phase, it's manually into production. That's the difference. In after the acceptance test, it's manually deployed into production. But in continuous deployment, 
we can uh, the difference is after the acceptance test is automatically the all the yeah my colleague uh, Andrea said like uh, the pipelines are passed it's automatically deployed or reflected in production that's the main difference uh, in continuous delivery it is the manual part but in continuous deployment it is in automated that's the key difference Okay, and another one uh, attendee, Mike, uh, he's asking like, is DevOps feasible to implement in a startup environment? Of course, yes, it's more uh, suitable to uh, uh, start with startups because uh, in bigger companies and all, they will be already having some set of processes and all, uh, which they might feel uh, it would not be a uh, small job to change all these, but for startups, you can actually start with this because there are a lot of open source tools available in the market uh, so that you can start with all these things. So what's best with startups? Yes. All right. And I feel that's all the priority questions are. And uh, of course, there are uh, people asking like, uh, do we have this recording of this webinar and document shared somewhere? Of course, obviously it will be shared to all attendees and uh, you will be give, getting the link where you can see the recordings uh, from from our moderators so please uh, keep listening to that otherwise you can reach us at info at bridgeglobal.com so thanks a lot for for a wonderful webinar session Anuraj and uh, Saji and thanks a lot for all the audiences over here who were listening yeah, to us yeah. Uh, yeah. for sharing their wonderful time with us. Yeah, good, thanks. So, and thanks a lot for Binu as well for organizing yeah. this. I'm still waiting for any questions to answer so that we can, we have some eight more minutes to end up this session. I just want to answer as much queries possible. So I'm just waiting for the questions. Please hold on. Uh, and we can even uh, send it as emails or uh, messages so that we can directly communicate with them uh, for their for sure, well. for sure, for sure. So I hope uh, this was it. Like, thanks a lot for all the attendees who uh, registered with us and participated for the event. And uh, if at all you have still any queries, uh, you need to answer regarding this webinar sessions. And uh, we have some upcoming webinars on the same and the related. This time we uh, managed to uh, clip between DevOps and QA. Later we will be clipping between development process, the, the designing process. Of course, one, asks, uh, one of our attendees asked like uh, the security testing, the performance testing, these all things we will be sharing each other and we will be bringing this uh, into consideration for the upcoming webinars. So thanks a lot guys and uh, we'll see you soon again. Thank you Andres, thank you Sajid, thanks all attendees. Bye.